Hello again. Here's how to make an alarm. Um, this is an alarm that you can use to protect any valuable objects like your mobile phone or perhaps if you've got a secret diary or a notebook. Um, any object that's heavy enough to push the lever down you can protect it. To make the alarm we're going to use um, a buzzer, a 3 volt buzzer. Uh, two AA batteries, uh, a, AA, um, a twin AA battery holder, battery holder connector, some 3mm and some 4mm Corex, uh, two small pieces of 4mm dowel, two small pieces of square section wood, two paper fasteners, two card axle supports, or you can make your own, and um, two um, metal weights. These are penny blanks. Um, they're available from my shop. You could use um, some 2p coins. Okay, the first thing that we need to do is make a hole in the middle of the piece of 3mm corex. You could use um, cardboard. Um, this piece of corex is uh, roughly 20 centimetres by uh, 12 centimetres. Uh, I've used my um, faithful uh, hole punch to punch this hole out. Uh, you could cut it out with a craft knife. Perhaps that would be something that an, that an adult would do. Um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to make the um, lever arm that's going to uh, operate the um, alarm system. And for this I'm using a piece of 4mm corex for strength with the flutes running lengthwise to make it stronger. And to make the pivot I'm going to use a very small piece of 4mm corex uh, with the flutes going that way and I'm just going to glue that across. Um, roughly about um, 3 or 4 centimetres from one end. So I'm just going to use a glue gun to do that. I have tried making alarms uh, in primary schools before with year 4 upwards. My previous designs have used um, uh, a, f a folded piece of corex. Um, they work, but they didn't prove to be reliable. I think an alarm system has got to be 100% um, reliable. Okay, we've glued that piece of corex on there. So now we can push a piece of 4mm dowel through, and that's going to make the um, pivot. We now need to install that uh, underneath the... Um, piece of corex. It's got to go uh, near one end and we're going to make a little uh, pivot base here. We're going to glue these um, pieces of wood onto these card actual supports. They are available from my um, supply service or you can make your own. If you've got a hole punch just cut some bits of corex out and punch out some holes. So there's one, there's another one, like that, and then the, the lever arm is going to be fitted into the holes like that, so that it pivots um, a, bit like a, a bit like a seesaw. And that needs to be glued um, near one end of the alarm base about there. I'm just going to mark that off. There we go. So we get one of them glued. Like that. Make sure there's plenty of room between these two actual supports so that the um, lever arm pivots freely. There we go. Make sure that this part of the lever arm uh, is over the top of the hole in the corex. That's the last one. The second one. We have got a few seconds wriggle room. I'm using a high milk glue gun. So there we are, and that's our pivot arm installed. Can you see that? Now we want this um, pivot arm when there isn't something on top to be in that position. 
so that the circuit is on. So when there isn't anything on the alarm we want it to be on and when there is something we want it to be off. So it's the opposite that we usually have switches. So to make that arm always go upwards we're going to put some um, weights on the end. You could use um, a block of wood, uh, some nuts and bolts, um, 2p coins. Uh, it just so happens that I sell these uh, penny blank weights that we use in science experiments and I'm just going to um, glue two of them onto the end there. You could uh, use sticky tape as well. Sticky tape works well. Now there's one and then I'm going to glue the other one on top. There we are. So now it naturally drops down. It's going to be that way around in operation. So you can see that now it's always normally closed. Next thing we're going to do is to install the metal contact at the end. There's going to be one paper fastener on the lever arm and one paper fastener fixed to the uh, base of the alarm so that when the, when the two come together that will complete the circuit. Uh, I'm just going to push through a hole here to help me get the paper fastener through. Put it through near the end of the corex. Just pushing into a sponge block here for safety. And we need um, a piece of wire, just the ordinary standard wire that we use is fine. And we're going to um, use the fact that Corex has got holes for it to make a tidy job of this. We'll just pass that down through so it comes out the other end. I'm just going to hook that over. Pass it through the legs of the paper fastener. Bend it round. Pass it through the hole that you've made from underneath and bend the legs over. Just twist it round. There we are. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see the paper fastener now? And we've got the wire neatly. I think I can pull that down a bit. So we've got the, the head of the paper fastener underneath the lever arm. So now we've got to... Um, get the other paper fastener in position. Now we could pass it through there but I, I like to have the top of the alarm uncluttered so I'm going to just put a small piece of corex, this is a small piece of 3mm corex, make a hole in it again um, and this time we're going to put the red wire from the buzzer through the paper fastener. If you've watched previous videos in this series you'll know that buzzers are polarity conscious. That means they have to be connected the right way around. The red wire has to go to the plus, the positive side of the circuit. So I'm just going to pass these wires. I have stripped these wires back a bit more. Just pass the red wire around the paper fastener. There we go. And through the piece of corex. And bend the legs over as tight as we can. There we are. If you actually put it down on the table and really squash it and even tap it with a hammer. There we are, we've got a good connection there. I'm now going to glue that down in position and we need to make sure that the two paper fasteners actually uh, hit each other that they actually connect. So have a look underneath, Get, make sure the two heads line up. There we are, that looks about right. Again I'm going to mark that position with a pencil and I'm going to glue that down in position. So we'll put some glue under here. And mark that down. So now when the, uh, when the arm closes, I'm just going to slide that along, it's a good job I've got a few seconds to adjust it. There we are, I don't know, can you see that the two paper fasteners are now, are now touching each other. So we've now got to um, finish building the circuit. Um, 
we pop the two batteries in the battery holder, pop on the battery holder connector, make sure the two wires don't touch each other, that's a short circuit it will ruin the batteries, and we join the black wire from the batteries to the black wire from the buzzer, cross them over the bare ends and twist them together, there we go, and the red wire from the battery to complete the circuit is connected to the other end of the wire that we passed through the lever arm. So we just cross those over and twist them together. And fold them up as well. Okay, we're almost there. We'll just check that the circuit's working. Yes, it's working. We'll just turn it upside down to see if it works upside down. Yep, that's working. So, all we've got to do now is to make the um, stick that's going to come up and poke up through here that's connected to the lever arm. Now we need to make sure that the stick actually goes through the hole. So we'll have a look to see, we'll turn it over. We'll poke a screwdriver through here and push a hole through. We'll use our uh, sponge block again. There we are. Poke a hole through. Enlarge it a bit. It's slightly off centre, but it doesn't matter. And we push a piece of formula dowel through here. You almost don't need glue. If you make the hole tight. And push it up. And check that the stick is coming up. And you can see it poking up through there. You can adjust it. You only need a small bit of it sticking up. And when an object actually presses down on the stick, it will close the circuit. I'm just going to take one battery out so it doesn't drive us crazy while I finish it off. We just need to um, obviously glue all these parts down. So I'm going to glue the um, buzzer down in position. This is all going underneath the, but the um, alarm. So we'll glue the buzzer, get the wires all around there. We'll have the um, battery holder, I think, can go, let's see, I think the battery holder can go there. I mustn't forget I've got to put the other battery in. Uh, we'll tidy these wires up here. And what you can do is to um, put some sellotape um, underneath there to tidy that up. And also you could tidy uh, these wires up by putting some sticky tape down to tidy those up. So we'll just put, pop the battery in. And if we turn it over, we've got the, um, we've got the alarm working now. Any object you put on top will turn it off. As soon as you release the object, the weight drops and it will cause the buzzer to buzz. Um, I've got another one here that I've just finished off by tidying the wires up. And uh, I've glued four feet onto it so that it stands clear of the table. You could use blocks of wood, I've used cotton reels here. Um, and as you can see, you can protect any valuable object. What you could do is to ask the pupils to design perhaps a, a backdrop, keep off danger, uh, trespassers will be shot, or 50,000 volts, whatever, uh, perhaps telling them a story, uh, telling their story about how valuable this precious object is to them. So I hope you enjoy making um, your um, alarm.